What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about Norwegian words that do not exist in English. This sounds like such a fun and fascinating topic. I mean, the idea that there are such unique, very specific things in Norway so much so that there are words in Norwegian to describe these things or events or feelings, but there's no direct translation to a single English word. So all Norwegians can try to do is explain what the word means in a couple of sentences and describing. So sometimes it's very difficult to do. So I'm very, very interested today to learn about some of these Norwegian words that don't even exist in English, in my language. That just sounds so cool, and they must be such incredibly specific things to Norwegian culture. Things that really only happen in Norway or that mean anything meaningful to Norwegians. So I'm very excited to learn about what some of these things are, get a little glimpse into really, really specific Norwegian culture I've never learned about. So, with that being said, let's take a look. Today's topic is a crash course into our strange but beautiful language. <laughs> In Norway, we have some special and very unique words. Words right. that are impossible to translate. But to survive a conversation here, you have to understand them. Words that are impossible to translate. I wonder, what does that even mean? <laughs> because they describe who we are as a people and what is important to us. Okay. Um, uh, can you... Uh... Oh, what is this? Utepples? Utepples? Sounds like utensils. <laughs> I, I don't think this means fork and spoon, huh? Utepples? Translate utepils to English. Oh, sorry. Utepils? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Drink I'm outside, trying, perhaps? Yeah, like outside beer. What? Drinking outside? Outside beer? This is such an important concept. <laughs> this is such a popular activity in Norway. It's so important, it, it deserves its own word? Utipils? <laughs> Am I understanding correctly? They said out out outside drink. How would you translate this word to English? English? No. <laughs> no. Very small. No, just English. No, no, I can't. Man, this must mean this must mean more than just having a beer outside. Or, or is that a good translation? It is a Norwegian word, isn't it? Yeah, I. Utepils. Yeah. Yes. Utepils. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you translate it to English? No. No? No. The Earl. How would you translate Utepils? It's funny because uh, Norwegians are so good at English, yet they are all struggling to come up with a way to describe what this is. It's uh, an amazing concept where in the moment the sun starts to shine again, you sit outside and you drink beer. Huh? What? That is incredibly specific. The sun is shining, you sit outside, and you have a beer. So it's very relaxing, it's a very beautiful moment. And of course, it involves beer. <laughs> Utepils. Does this happen often enough that there needs to be a word for it? I've never even thought about doing something like this. And uh, what everything is, is uh, the one concept that you're done with the dark, the sun is coming out, it starts to be warmer, and warmer means five, six, seven degrees, <laughs> and you start to drink outside. Oh, so it's been dark and cold, and you finally get to go outside, because the weather changes, and then you have a beer just to top it off and make it amazing, to celebrate and enjoy it. 
Is that is that kind of what this is? What does this word say about Norway and Norwegians? <laughs> That we don't like the cold, or the, <laughs> we like the light. <laughs> Where I right. work, every single person would talk about Utebils from the age of uh, probably 25 until 60, 70, 80. So, in my wow. So, Nor this is very, very important to Norwegians. And, and like he said, it kind of reveals what's important to Norwegian culture. I experience everyone. Uh, when foreigners come to Norway, do they have to do utbils? I would say if you want to socialize, if you want to get to meet people, if you want to get to know people for real, you should. Oh, is this like a gathering? This is like, this isn't something you do alone. This is like a, a social event, a gathering. Everyone gets together, the weather is better, it's brighter out, and everyone drinks beer and socialize. Is that... So, okay, I'm glad they actually mentioned that. I thought it was like... Something you do alone at your house? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Do you want to know more about Norway? Okay. Okay. So that's it for that little clip. Uta pills. I also have this list: eleven words that are impossible to translate from Norwegian to English. Let's go through a couple of these as well. Peleg. 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 Uh, there's no precise translation, but it means lay on. It means lay on. What is to lay on something? Paleg is more of a food category. It is the toppings we have on sandwiches and bread. Oh, you you lay them on top of your sandwich. Oh, it means lay on. Paleg, like ham, butter, cheese, Nutella. Nutella. Okay, I, I get that. Toppings you have on sandwiches. All right, I don't think, yeah, we don't have a word specifically for that. Okay, so that must be very important for <laughs> Norwegian sandwiches. Uh, Heige, Heige? Uh, it isn't just a Norwegian word. It's also Danish. Okay. Um, Heige, Heige means a deep sense of place, warmth, friendship, contentment. Wow, that's that's so nice. But when we use it, it's not as deep as that. Haiga du deg means are you having a good time? Haigalig is a word that originates from hai haiga. Okay. Wow, what a beautiful sentiment. Place of warmth, uh friendship, commitment. That's so beautiful. Norwegians really like to have words for very positive fun events, huh? Uh, Paiskos, pi, Paiskos is an event when you sit in front of the fireplace having a good time. There we go again. Another Norwegian word <laughs> that's just about having a good time, about a very positive experience. I'm noticing that a lot. Pais translates to fireplace. Kos is having a good time. Cuddling, enjoyment, coziness. Paiskos. Wow. Morgenfrisk. <laughs> Morgenfrisk. This is mainly Danish, also used in Norway. Morgenfrisk means feeling well rested and frisky <laughs> when you wake up from a good night's sleep. Again, another very positive emotion. Nor Norwegians have a lot of words for these very, very specific feelings, very specific events. You wake up feeling well rested, frisky from a great night's sleep. So there's a whole word for it. Huh, that's interesting. Maybe um, like we need to come up with more English words that are really specific like that, that encapsulates a whole feeling like that. I like it. Uh, Jensenegled, the joy of meeting up with someone you haven't seen in a long time. Oh, like reuniting? But this, this, this like portrays the joy associated with it. Cool. Seeing someone after a long time. Wow. Uting. It literally means nuisance. Okay, this is finally, this is finally the first negative word. Uting. It's a nuisance. It's negative when Norwegian people use this word. It is usually meaning a bad habit. It is also used when something is annoying. 
inconvenient or a bother. Something is ooting. It is a bad thing. Okay, intro. So, <laughs> it's this is so cool because Norwegians just basically have more variety of words to choose from and for very, very specific situations. So if something is a nuisance or negative, Norwegians have the option to use uting. Okay, okay. It's a noun. It's a thing. Okay. Harry, adjective. No, not Prince Harry. <laughs> Harry is a word to describe corny things. Corny? Like cheesy? Corny? Lame? Some people translate it as cheesy. There you go. But that doesn't really fit the purpose. Oh, Harry. It is used to describe old-fashioned things. Or ugly. Not necessarily ugly. Like a fedora is Harry. So it's old-fashioned. It's not necessarily cheesy or corny or lame or cringy. It's old-fashioned. Hairy. The old leather couch is hairy. Okay, okay. Uh, at-paklat. An at-paklat is what we call a sibling when that sibling is the youngest. Oh, wow! See? This is the perfect example. Like, uh, we just have, Americans would just have to say, my youngest brother, my youngest sister. Whereas Norwegians can specifically talk about their youngest sibling in one word, at paklat. Well, mostly if the person is born much later than the other siblings, or he or she wasn't really planned. <laughs> okay. Tropenat. This is what we call a night that's very hot. Not sexually, but literally. <laughs> Okay, there. make no mistake. Literally when it is really hot in temperature. Tropanat. It's when the weather is wet, it's over 70 degrees, you're sweating, you're turning your pillow to the cool side. Oh, wait. Okay, is it like hot in an uncomfortable way? Kinda? Because that sounds like uncomfortably hot. You're sweating into your bed. Tropanat. Okay, but I thought... I thought Norwegians like the hot, but this is like uncomfortably hot, I guess. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hot at nighttime. Trop means hot, not means night. Okay, okay. Uh, dogn? Dogn? I think? This word exists in English, but it's not used. Dogn? I don't know what, what that means. Ever heard of a niche termoron? No. <laughs> that, the word... Niche temeron originates from Greek. A niche temeron is a period of 24 consecutive hours. Oh, it isn't 12 a.m. to 12 a.m. the next day. It's any point at any time of day uh, that can start at any time. And it's 24 consecutive hours. How do you pronounce this? I wonder if I can look this up, how to pronounce it. Hmm. Do dogna? Huh. Well, here we go. Maybe this will tell me. Doi. What? What is that? Doi. Doi? Doi? Doi. Doi? <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly, but a period of 24 hours. Okay, I've never heard that before, but I feel like there should be a word for that in English, actually, now that I've heard of that. Uh, Uta pills. <laughs> okay, perfect. So this is the last one on the list, I think. And it's... No, no, there's more. Never mind. Uta pills, which we learned about in the video at the beginning. So, so what does this say it is? It's directly translated to outside pint. But that's not a word in English. It's when you go out for a pint. Outdoor seating. Yeah, okay. It's after the winter. We go for the first pint outside on the first warm day of the year. Oh, it's a tradition. It's, it's celebrating the first warm day of the year. Not just any warm day. It's when finally the seasons are changing and it's warm outside and everyone gets together for a little celebration and has beer. Oh, that makes so much more sense. I get it. I get I, I get it. Utapils. Okay. 
Now I see. Well, Vanderpils, the beer you take on a walk between places. <laughs> okay, this was the last one, Vanderpils. Speaking of beer, in Norway, if you're drinking beer between places, yeah, people in the United States, you're, in the US, you're not really, it's not very good to be walking around with open alcohol like that, walking around. <laughs> so we don't really have a word for that. Okay, well, there you go. Wow! See, this is just so fun, so fascinating to me. Uh, the idea that there are such specific, such Norwegian things, concepts, that are only explainable in English in by just saying a bunch of ex other words and sentences. There's no one way, no one word to translate these Norwegian words. That is such a fun concept for me. I can't even think of any English words that are that are like this. Norway has so many unique things. And a lot of these express like specific scenarios or or just feelings. Feelings and, or celebrations or yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. It's so cool. I, I love this stuff. The, the, the whole idea of this. Uh, I think I understood most of what this stuff meant, but I think as an American who only speaks English, there's only so much I can actually wrap my head around. And most of these things you have to, you have to live to truly understand, but I really, really enjoyed this anyway, and I think I got a good grasp of some of these. So I enjoyed it anyway. If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture and stuff in Norway I have never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.